Welcome to CulturCast. My name is Sister Mary Michael, and I'm a Dominican Sister of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist. You may have seen us, as we are located all around the world. Following in the footsteps of St. Dominic, our mission is to be teachers and preachers. And this calling puts us in front of all kinds of interesting people, in interesting places, doing interesting things. All for a great purpose, much larger than any one of us, like being on Oprah, the Dominican Sisters of Mary invited us to their big day. Look at this. On the top of the Billboard classical music charts, or on a television game show. You better believe it! Join me every week as the Culture Cast takes you inside Heaven's Kitchen to show you how to cook for an army and become a culinary artist. Or go on the road with the sisters and become traveling pilgrims as you learn all the things that can be seen and those that are unseen. Or sit down with Mother Assumpta Long as she unlocks a few stories from some unsuspecting guests. Join us for unlikely adventures, and together, let's learn new things, see new places, and meet new faces on The Culture Cast. This week on The Culture Cast, join us for conversations with Mother Assumpta Long. Good morning. Uh, we're so honored today to have John Dechak with us, who is no stranger to our community because he's the president of Father Gabriel Richard in Ann Arbor and also teaches Latin to our postulants. And by the way, we're going to have this uh, in Latin, if you don't know. Uh, that's fine. Okay, fine. Okay, I would okay, prefer good. it, actually. Okay, that's what yeah. I thought. But anyway, uh, John, you have been, at least the, um, her year, you are... You've been in the military, you've been a lawyer and an educator, so you're just well-rounded. Now, uh, what... Well-rounded, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, I understand that you are a wonderful advocate of Father, one of my favorite Jesuits, mm -hmm. is Father Walter Chiswick. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. And since you're going to be uh, speaking about temperance, yeah. how do you... What can you tell us about him sure. that would oh, yeah. kind of... No, that's great. Uh, no, thank, thank you for the opportunity, Mother. Um, before I get into Father Chiswick, <laughs> um, there's a great quote by G.K. Chesterton about temperance, oh, okay. uh, which I thought I'd you know, okay. offer to you okay, because yeah. <laughs> this is a good one. Um, he says, we can give glory to God for bacon and beer by not eating or drinking too much of it. <laughs> so I thought that was a great one. But uh, with Father Chiswick... Well, Billock has one, too. Yes, he yeah, does. Yeah, no, he we'll does. leave that for another okay. episode. Okay. <laughs> yeah, But um, Father Chiswick is a great, great individual, just in terms of any of the virtues, as any saint is, mm -hmm. certainly. Um, but he was, uh, he was an interesting character who, as you know, in his youth and in his young life as a seminarian, mm -hmm. uh, would go to the extreme, really. Right. And um, on the virtues and um, in trying to practice them, at least. Um, and, and with regards to temperance, um, he fasted, I think, all Lent one year. He did. He did. For, with yeah. bread and water. <laughs> and uh, uh, I don't know if that's temperate, though. It may not be prudent, but it could be. Correct. Okay, could, Correct. Okay. Yeah. So I, it just shows <laughs> the like, interplay yeah. of, the, of the virtues together, yeah. you know. Um, John, I don't think he could have done later what he did in, unless he had that drive as a youth. Correct. That's not the only thing, I'm sure. No, you, correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Um, but that's absolutely, that's absolutely right. And I think that uh, his, his uh, ability, his, his training of the will, really, and he wrote his dissertation on that, um, really helped him uh, – in the virtue of temperance and in, in his later life as well, he was always very, and people noticed this about him, he was always very um, uh, prudent at table. You know, he didn't take too much, he didn't drink too much. When there was leftover food, people recounted that he would always save it. If, if you're not going to eat that, I'll take that and I'll make mm -hmm. soup out of it or oh, whatever the case yeah, may be. Yeah. Um, and part of that, I think, was not only his, his certainly his knowledge about um practicing virtue and temperance, but also um, the the lack that he had in his trials in Russia, you oh, know, yeah. to, to value every little, every little scrap and every uh, bit of food 
Um, and so in, in that sense, too, I think he really had a heightened awareness and a practice of the virtue yeah. because of that. Yeah. John, don't you think, I mean, I would recommend everyone reading With God in Russia or He Leadeth Me. Yes. It is unbelievable. Yeah. What, um, what was his life like there in the, in the concentration camp? Yeah. I and mean, how many years, actually? Yeah. So he was five years in solitary confinement. Can you even imagine? And yeah. it's uh, so many people react differently. We think of these yeah. people with uh, PTSD is very spoken of nowadays. Yeah. So shell shock in the old yeah. days. I think we had referred to it. Uh, and they react differently and sometimes psychologically are very mm -hmm. damaged and whatnot. Um, but he went through five years of that in terms of just solitary right. confinement, very small amounts of food. Um, the only thought he says during those years was how to get the next scrap of food. That was the all-consuming, all-consuming uh, thing for them. After that, though, he serves an additional 15 years in the gulags, so in the camps, yeah. where not much changed, much deprivation in terms of food, clothing, uh, all the, the material comforts, mm -hmm. and so uh, it, it's. The fact that he he kept his head about him is an amazing uh, thing, and it's it's really is God's grace and his former training, as we were speaking yeah. of, really kind of girded him for that. So uh, the Lord knew what he was doing and preparing him for yeah. that trial and that sort of thing. So, John, do you have any? Because I couldn't figure it out. Yeah. Do you have any um, insight into why he had such a desire to go to Russia? He always always uh, wanted to do the hardest thing. That was <laughs> that basically, like that's that, how huh? he describes it, right? Yeah. Um, and he, uh, from, his, from his fastings to his penances yeah. to his uh, prayer life even, uh, always wanted to do uh, the best and be the best. Mm -hmm. um, at this time when he enters uh, the Society of Jesus, it's a high of, or it's a time of, Of, of high persecution in Russia because the communists yeah. had taken over. They'd been mm -hmm. in power for 10 years, roughly. Um, and that was the toughest missionary assignment that the church had to offer, essentially. Yes. In many ways, a death, a death sentence, too. Mm -hmm. So uh, he was naturally attracted to being, you know, uh, like the Jesuit heroes of old, yeah. doing, the, yeah. doing the toughest thing. Yeah. So I think that was what his really motivated him. It had to be supernatural in it, certain it, aspects. It, it, yeah. um, and as he tells in his story, any sort of prideful aspects were weaned yeah. <laughs> from him during yeah. that experience. Yeah. So, You know, I found it interesting when he got out of the concentration camp, his continued ministry to the people there. He's, he's yes. just remarkable. Yes. How did yes. that period go in his life? Did so, you know? yeah, so he was three years in... Um, kind of house arrest, couldn't go mm -hmm. to the major cities, yeah. mm -hmm. um, could only be restricted to a few of these other cities, um, and very much scraping a living, you know, um, yeah. he was a car mechanic, you know, he was uh, a uh -huh. laborer, you know, I mean, he just, he had, he to, just, get a job. He had yeah. to get a job, yeah. he had to yeah. survive, and he describes it very um, interestingly about what he made, he made a pot of soup at the beginning of the week, and that <laughs> lasted him three uh -huh. days or uh -huh. four days, whatever it yeah. was, you know, and... Um, And so he, uh, during that time, he still sought opportunities to be a priest and yeah. to, uh, to minister to yeah. these people. Mm -hmm. And even to the point of in his apartments, taking, a, you know, sitting, you know, uh, you know, our lives today are so luxurious in the United States. Oh, you know, sure. um, these were, he, he slept in the corner. He slept on the floor. Yeah. He slept where, mm -hmm. where uh, he was able to sleep um, You know, and, and didn't demand much because he was further, you know, he wanted to um, make room for our Lord. And in one apartment in particular, the whole apartment was a chapel. They had, uh, he happened to find another priest, um, two priests in, uh, uh, in this case. They made their apartment a chapel and they basically slept on the floor. So everything for God in that <laughs> regard um, and uh, less for themselves. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know, that's right. I was so thrilled when he finally, I mean, you can tell us about his release, yeah. but you, you couldn't help but feel sorry for the people he left. You think, yeah. who is going to minister to Correct. those people? Yeah, 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 they yeah. were so eager for a priest, yeah. and they themselves made sacrifices yes. to go to the Mass. You yes. Know, that, you know, but their lives were just tragic. Yes. But um, 
How did his release come about? He was um, released uh, in an exchange yeah. uh, from in the United States. In the United States, the Kennedy administration, yeah. uh, Robert Kennedy in particular, had an especial interest uh, in his case. Yeah. And uh, he was released with one other gentleman who's now a professor at the University of Chicago. Oh, so he's still alive. Yeah, oh, he was. He was a much younger man. He's oh, twenty okay. twenty six at the yeah. time. Um, uh, for two Soviet spies who are in New York, mm-hmm. so they swapped. And uh, if you look at a picture of these Soviet spies, they look like <laughs> Boris and Natasha. You know, so they were uh, very. It was very oh, much right. a, uh, a, a diplomatic coup in many ways. Yeah. That, that this happened. And, it must have been uh, such a shock for him, really, absolutely. to just get worried that he's going to be released. Yeah. Now, what was his life like in America when he came back? It must have been, sure. can you, I can't even imagine yeah. coming from that yeah. and coming back to America yeah. and living the lifestyle that we live. There's uh, a great little anecdote that is told by the gentleman who he was released with um, about their way back into the United States on the airplane. Father was so taken with the luxury of things oh, yeah. because he had done without oh, yeah. for so long oh, yeah. that everything was precious. Every even the the covers of the yeah. of the airline, you know, um, uh, uh, seats. You know, he would yes. feel, and you know, he's just it was just amazing. This luxury, it's just a regular plane. There's nothing mm-hmm. special. Even the food on the way back, he's like savoring every bite. Um, and then when he ref- when he returned to the United States. Uh, he kind of had that same um, mentality. So uh, he wrote an article for America Magazine, I think about three weeks after he came back. And he, he's very dispassionate in the sense of, um, mm-hmm. these are my impressions. I'm not making judgments. Yeah. Yeah. But he, he commented on the luxury of everything. Yes. You go to a supermarket and you have everything you I'm, want. Yeah, right. Everything you want. You go to a, uh, there, he, one of his Jesuit confreres brought, brought him to a, uh, to a hardware store. And he was amazed. I, I can get multiple of these. He was oh. sh- he was so shocked. He was like a fish out of yeah. water in many ways, because he had been a laborer and getting a standing in line for a wrench took three years or three months or whatever yeah. it was, you know, over there. Um, and so seeing all of this was just astounding to him, and and yet he still uh, cherished every even if it was just one screwdriver yeah. he chipped. Need to take care of this. I'll put it where it belongs. This yeah. and that, you know, and just mm-hmm. like the food I mentioned a little earlier. So all of those things, he never took anything for granted, even though there's a great abundance um, available in, in the United States. It's just amazing. We just yeah. take, just think what we take for granted. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now, uh, John, where is his cause now for beatification? Sure. Or, yeah. Yeah. Languishing in Rome, yeah. <laughs> mother. Languishing in Rome. Like at, what, at what point is it at sure. this time? Yeah. So he is the servant of God. So that very yeah. first uh-huh. rung. And many people, just because of the paperwork necessary, the investigations yeah. that need to be done, yeah. are there for quite a long time. Um, but phase one is done, which is great. Um, and so it's on the, de- on the desks in Rome. Who it's is this the- promoter? The promoter of the cause of the Society of Jesus at this point. Oh, it is. Okay. So okay. Well, it should be. Yeah. Yep. Originally, yeah. it started in the diocese. Uh, it was actually in the Byzantine eparchy of Passaic. So the Byzantine diocese, they initiated the, the cause. Oh, okay. Um, okay. The Romans then took over. Okay. And that was in okay. Allentown, Pennsylvania. So technically, the Bishop of Allentown, Pennsylvania is, you know, kind of the promoter on the as, as the Episcopal promoter. Oh, okay. But the society is taken on for this next phase. So. Oh. Yeah. Well, I certainly, yeah. he, if anybody deserves canonization, I would think he, you know, just reading his life and reading his books are, yeah, are yeah. remarkable. I concur. So, yeah, yeah, great. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, we can just hope that that happens. Yeah. yeah but, John, you know, I was thinking all of your accomplishments, but probably your greatest accomplishment being the father of eight. Eight. Is that yes. right? God bless you. Yes. That yes, is yes. wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Now, how, um, if you, I don't know if you want to take this or not, but sure. I mean, being the president of, Okay, we're Richard. So there's 500 I mean, more kids to add to the eight. Yeah, so that's yeah. right. That's right. And how would you, how would you teach, let's say that the students, let's high school said temperance. Say, I mean, where where do you see yeah. mostly they need this virtue? Yeah, yeah, to exist. No, know? that's that's a great yeah. question, mother. Um, I think temperance. I think just situating it first. What is it about? What is yeah, temperance yeah. about? Um, 
St. Th- you know, St. Augustine speaks of it a little more broadly. St. Yeah, St. Thomas yeah, kind of really, yeah. as, he, as is his custom, Moderate, yeah. delves right into it. Yeah. It's about the bodily pleasures, right? Yeah. Um, it's about um, uh, things that really are attractive to us. Uh, dr- food, drink, um, sexual intercourse, obviously, would be something that would be a, a drive within us yeah. that uh, calls for the virtue of temperance. Um, so just situating that first of all is how I would, I would, I would start and talking about, um, the fact that we are, our natures are wounded because of original sin. Mm -hmm. And so our, we are oftentimes disordered in our desires for bodily things. And so food or drink and, you know, the usual things teenagers, you know, suffer, you know, because they're, They're in that po- mm-hmm. period of their life where they're seeking independence and they have these desires and they're heightened and whatever else. So situating it in that fashion that these drives are good, these desires for these mm-hmm. things are excellent, mm-hmm. very good. But we have this thing that kind of keeps it out of whack. So we need to focus on this virtue in order to govern ourselves. Mm-hmm. The, Greek, the Greeks called it, and I'll never forget it because I had a Jesuit yeah. teacher who taught me this, <laughs> sure. um, sophrosune, right? Yeah. So internal self-control. Yeah. By, by moderating what we can eat and drink um, and the, the proper use of our sexual functions for, in marriage, um, that then has a ripple effect in yeah. the way we think and our moderation in some of those other intellectual pursuits as well. Yeah. The virtue isn't pr- proper to that necessarily, yeah. but St. Thomas, in, in conjunction with St. Augustine, would, would teach that if we have control of our bodily desires, we certainly would be able to moderate with other virtues, certainly, um, some of our yeah. intellectual yeah. desires. Are... You, know, you know, John, what, what we see today is is really trying to teach moderation in, let's say, the social media. Correct. You know, like internet, yep. iPhones. I mean, yep. it's just off the chart, yep. you know. Yep. You know, we're, we're, we're destroying personal communication with people. That's right. Yeah. I mean, you go and everybody's on an app, you know. Yeah. So moderate, I mean, I think moderation is a wonderful word for, because these things yeah. are good. Yes, yes. And we want to teach the good. Yes. But we also know the dangers, especially, you know, children. And right. it's hard, you know, it's it's just hard. Yes. It's getting harder and harder. Yeah. But even little ones, you know, they get yep. to know that uh, you can't play too much. You can't, yeah. you know, you can't. Just all of the things where we want to go to extremes. So That's it's right. just it, anyway. It's it's a wonderful it's a wonderful time for yeah. this virtue. Right. I mean to really teach it in on all aspects of our life. And I think and, too. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. The social media thing is very much. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's very easy to get lost in it, and two hours have gone away, and you didn't oh, even yeah. realize it. Yeah. Um, I think adults who are fully formed have that problem as oh, well. Oh, sure, sure. Um, and it go, it actually sports, goes. Sports. Yeah, you know, absolutely, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. sports, you know. And that goes to the yeah, point, though. I think yeah. the point of the virtue is uh, this is a, inf- you know, this is a virtue that needs to be cultivated mm-hmm. on those aspects of our person, the bodily aspects. We get all consumed in shopping or sports or yeah. technology. Yeah. Why? Because our senses are sure, utilizing these sure. things. Um we want to hear more, we want to see more, we want to experience more, we want to feel yeah. more, we want to eat more, all that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and so, and that's the way God made us. And these are all good inclinations. But to moderate them and to understand uh, their uh, service to the higher, to the higher uh, spiritual functions. I know. I know. So uh, it's a challenge. Oh, but a we, are made, we are made for <laughs> such times, Mother. Oh, my yeah. goodness. So, we yeah. are. I think, oh, God. You know, I would be a much better person in the Renaissance era. <laughs> oh, no. I feel as if this, I feel <laughs> the same anyway, way. Yeah, yeah. It's a challenge. But yeah. we can do it. Yes, because absolutely. We're, we can do it. Absolutely. And you've got a lot to do. And yeah. we all have a lot to do. Yeah. So, well, listen, thanks a million for coming over. And God bless be you, sure our sisters you. behave themselves. Make sure they I use will. moderation. Over absolutely. They're very moderate. Okay. Their criticism of me, I hope. So, yeah. Okay, good. Well, thanks. Thanks a million. Thank you, Mother. God bless you. God bless. If you've enjoyed this particular show of the Culture Cast, please make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Twitter. But as always, all of this content can be found on goledigital.org.